Hey everyone, it's Professor Nagel. We're going to do now exercise 3-1, which is code and test the invoice total form from Murex C Sharp 8th edition. All right. Um, and do me a favor. You could subscribe to my channel. I'm trying to get my subscriber numbers up just a little bit more. That would uh, greatly help me out. I appreciate it. I help you. You help me. All right, let's get to this. Um, so exercise 3-1 actually starts from where we left off on 2-1. Uh, but we don't want to just, you know, open this and start working with it. We want to make a copy of this. All right. So um, grab your 2-1 folder or directory. Remember, folder and directory, those terms are interchangeable. You don't want the zip file. Okay. And if you can't see the difference, um, maybe yours looks like this and only the icon is different. All right. You're you're a programmer now, so you should care about file name extensions. So in Windows, go to View and turn on file name extensions. All right, that's going to help us out. All right, take this 2 1. I'm going to Control C to copy it and then Control V to paste. And I just made a copy of it. And now I'm going to hit F2 and I'm going to rename this. All right, so this is going to be. Cursor's going all over the place here. I'm going to blame OneDrive on that. 3-1, invoice total, and your last name. And this is what we're going to work on. So we're going to open up. We're in 3-1, and we're going to open up the solution. All right, so this is our lovely form that we made um, last chapter, and we're going to make this uh, functional. Let's get to it. And if you don't see your form here, if it opened up like this, um, find your FRM invoice total, double click on that, and here's your form. All right, we are on step three. Display the invoice total form in the form designer. That's what this is. Double click on the calculate button to open the code editor and generate the method declaration for the click event of this object. So your calculate button right here, double click on it. And now we have the method that is going to run when somebody clicks on that button. And let me make this a little bit bigger for both you and I. And because we're working with code, we're not adding any more elements to our form. I'm going to take the toolbox. And remember, I have it pinned right now, so it's always open. I'm going to set it to auto hide. So I'm going to hit that middle pin so it goes away. And to finish up step three, um, enter the code for this method as shown in figure 3.6. And as we code um, figure 3.6, which I'm loading up right now, we're going to try to use uh, keyboard shortcuts and IntelliSense and all sorts of shortcuts to help us code quicker. All right, so we are in the private method btn calculate underscore click. You should not type this out. All right, remember, this was generated because we double clicked on the calculate button. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to declare a decimal. And look, I started typing DE, and this is the autocomplete options. And I like decimal. That's what I'm looking for. So I hit tab called subtotal, subtotal. And that's going to be equal to, um, and this autocomplete. Uh, that worked pretty well, and I, I really wish it wasn't that great, but it is. So um, it's not perfect. I don't want to use decimal.parse. I'm going to use convert dot to decimal. Yep, that's what I want. Man, this autocomplete is good, but it's not perfect. Um, to decimal, and what we're going to load is the txt subtotal box dot text. And remember, C sharp commands end with a semicolon. All right, so there was quite a bit of autocomplete there to help us out. But what we're doing is we're finding the TXT subtotal box on our form. That's this one right here. We're taking the text property of it, whatever the user entered, and we convert that to a decimal and store that into subtotal. All right, and then um, decimal discount percent is going to be equal to zero with an M after it. So this M, uh, think about that M like money, all right? 
um, any decimal values, even this is a percent, it's not money, but if you want a decimal value, um, you have to put that M next to it. All right, now we're gonna check the C um, and actually like it doesn't really matter what um, this code is doing. We're not really learning what it's doing. We're just entering code. So I told a story about how when I started coding, um, I used to get a magazine in the mail. This was, oh, back in like the late 80s, early 90s. And we would, that autocomplete went a little crazy. Else if, um, we would just follow along what was in the magazine and we would have a new application. So right now, pretend you're kind of working from a magazine and we're just randomly, not randomly, but we're just blindly following along, copying the code here. All right, so you should be at this point right now. Um, and the next section we're gonna put in here is very similar to this section right here. So I'm gonna take my cursor, see my cursor moving around. I'm gonna go on the line above where I wanna start copying and then hit the right arrow. So my cursor's at the beginning of that line. I'm gonna hold down shift so I can select these lines and hit down. I wanna select this line, this one, this one, and this one. And I wanna take this code block that I have highlighted and I want to copy and paste it. Now I can, you know, control C, V, V, copy, paste, right? But instead, that's a lot of keys. I can hit control E and then V. All right, so I have this selected, control E, let go of both, and now hit V. And that will duplicate those lines down for you. All right, in this section, we need to change these values. This is 100, this is 250, and this is 0.1. So we just figured out the discount percent. Now we're gonna say discount amount equals subtotal times discount percent, semicolon. Notice, like as I'm typing this, if I'm, first of all, I'm not looking at my hands. And second of all, as I'm typing, if I like what I see, D, E, yes, I want decimal, I hit tab. All right, so that's how I am completing this so quickly. All right, invoice total is equal to subtotal minus discount, and it's not discount percent, I want discount amount. That's the one below it there. So I can hit the down arrow and now hit tab, semicolon. All right, as you work on this, you will become faster and faster at coding. All right, let's fill in some of the form elements that we have. So TXT discount um, percent, the text value of that, I want that to be equal to the discount percent as a string. And it is um, a percent sign. So we put that P1 in there. And again, we're just typing code. You don't need to understand what we're doing here. And TXT total. All right, a lot of just hitting tab there to let that autocomplete. And then CXT subtotal dot focus. All right, we'll put some code in. Um, no red squiggly lines. Red squiggly lines means you screwed something up. All right, but we did not. So this is the code. Get it to look like this. If you need to, pause the video and come back. But that was step three. Step four, return to the form designer and double click the exit button to generate the method and enter what's in 3.6. Quite simple, when you click the exit button, we take this window and we close it. I'm not sure where this event handler came from. I don't recall setting this up, uh, but that's okay because I think one of the steps is we need to delete an event handler. So we will get back to that. All right, step five is open the error list. So view error list. And we have no errors, but if you have errors, you would click on it and then fix it.
All right, so if it says there's an error on line 30, compare your line 30 to what I have. Um, the line numbers don't have to be exact, all right? Um, that's where we are, okay. And now run this. So I hit the, the green start button. You can also hit F5 to run it. And again, if you had any errors, fix those errors. Um, and that was step six. Step seven, enter a numeric value in the first text box. One, two, three. And hit calculate. And it worked. And then hit escape to exit. Or we could have one, two, three, hit enter, which simulates clicking on calculate or click the exit button. All right, remember, when we designed our form, we said that the accept button is BTN Calculate. So if, as you're working on the form, if you hit enter, it's like you clicked on BTN Calculate. And if you hit escape, it's the cancel button. It's like you clicked on BTN Exit. All right, those are doing the same things. All right, that was step seven. Step eight is enter invalid data and click Calculate. And now we are in break mode and it's telling us that XX is not in the correct format. You cannot take XX and convert it to a decimal. If you hover over that, you see that TXT subtotal, um, the text value of that is XX. All right, this just helps you debug. Um, if you're trying to figure out what the heck's going on with your project, that's what this is for. All right, and we're gonna learn more about debugging in the future. So we want to stop the debugger, which is this red X right here. And, you know, if there was code we had to fix, we could fix it, but there isn't. So <clears throat> let's move on. We're going to hide the error list by clicking this auto hide. All right. Our error list is here, but we do have it set to auto hide. It's only going to appear when we actually have errors now. Next, change the name of the subtotal text box from TXT subtotal to TXT subtotal. So the name of this box was TXT subtotal. I'm gonna make the T here, the capital T. And in doing so, let's jump back to our code. And while the form's open, we can hit F7 to go to our code. What's kind of funny is they they told us to rename the text box and it's supposed to cause an error, but it actually updated our code for us, all right? Um, so let's hit undo, say yes. I want this box that undo did not work. I want that to be CXT subtotal. It's updated here. Let's just rename it in our code. TXT subtotal. Now, red squigglies. All right. Because TXT subtotal does not exist on this form. All right. It does not exist with a capital T here. It only exists with a lowercase t. So I should be able to see on my error list, TXT subtotals does not exist. I can click on it and... It'll give me some information about it. If you click on the compiler error, you can also double click on the line and it'll jump you to that spot. And if we go to run our project right now with syntax errors, it's important that you read this, all right? Because a lot of students, when you get a pop-up, you say yes right away, right? But look what it's saying. There were build errors. I tried to build your application and I failed because there's, there's syntax errors. Do you want to continue and run the last successful build? You don't want to do that. You've made changes since then. All right. So if you have errors, you say no at this point. Okay. And you got to go back and fix your errors. So let's make these lowercase. Fix our errors. Back to functional code. Now we're going to um, just click on the subtotal variable. And you can see it highlights all the places in the code that this is being referenced, all right? And we wanna take this and we wanna right click on it and we want to rename, okay? Also F2. I wanna rename subtotal to invoice subtotal, all right? And you can see, you get a nice preview of where it was updated. Um, if your comments, if you have comments in your code that talk about this, um, you can say, yeah, re rename it in comments too. If you have that mentioned in strings, uh, you typically wouldn't, but you can do that as well. So I'm happy with the preview that I see back here. Hit enter, and now it's been updated in eight spots all at once. All right, so that's how you would rename a variable. And then F5, let's make sure that 
everything works. It's still working. That was step 13. Okay, remember I accidentally have this TXT subtotal event handler down here. Um, step 14 is kind of like that. They want you to click on the form itself. I accidentally clicked on um, TXT subtotal. It doesn't matter. So you can double click on the form itself or double click on TXT subtotal. The idea is that you want uh, an event handler here that doesn't do anything, right? You, you messed up, didn't mean to run this or put this here. So this code is useless to us. So I just want to delete it. All right. So I'm going to take this and delete it. Save my application again and then run the application. And look, there's build errors. Do you want to continue and run the last successful build? No, we never want to do that. All right. But there's no errors in the code here, right? There's no red squiggly lines. Well, look, here's our error right here. It's coming from the designer on line 90. Let's double click on that and go over here. Here is the wire for the event handler. All right. It's saying that when the TXT subtotal box is changed, run this method. And this method doesn't exist anymore. So we need to take this line and get rid of it. And you can delete a line that you're on by holding down control and hitting L. And that deletes the line. So save that now, run it. Now it built, built successfully and it ran. All right. So let me do that one more time. I'm going to close this, go back to my designer. I'm going to do step 14 is double click on the form. Oh, this is the event I don't want. I'm not using this. I'm, I messed up. I didn't need to double click there. Save. Now run it. There's an error because we wired the form loading to that event handler, and then we deleted the event handler. The form loading is pointing to a method that doesn't exist. So let's go over here. Here it is. Control L to delete that line. Save it. And now we can run it just fine. Okay. That was steps 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. We're almost done. I mean, we kind of are done. Step 19 is close Visual Studio. All right. We saved everything. We obviously ran it one more time before we closed the application. We could move on to make sure that it worked. My Visual Studio is trying to update. Um, so this is what we were just working on. All right. I want to go up a directory. So I'm going to hit the up arrow here. I'm going to take this 3-1 folder, right click on it, send to compress zip folder, and this zip file is what's being submitted for exercise 3-1. Good job. Remember, subscribe. I help you, you help me. Thank you.